Okay, traders, welcome to this week's live analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. If you can hear me and you can see the screen, if you could type a, a Y in the chat box, that would be great. Good stuff. Okay, let's uh, let's get going here. Um, one second. Okay, so before we jump into today's content, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer, understanding that trading any financial instrument carries an inherent risk, and we could uh, potentially lose more capital than we necessarily have on deposit. And more importantly, for today's session, any opinions expressed by me today are solely mine. They are not representative or indicative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So for those of you uh, joining us for the first time today, I'll just give you a, a brief introduction as to uh, my background. As I say, my name is Patrick Munley. After I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years of learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading or more appropriately day gambling, the S&P 500. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some, some quite solid and then some quite significant gains. However, as is often the case, that beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, very quickly giving back all the gains, and then ultimately uh, taking a six-figure hit on my, uh, my personal capital. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. At this point, I really had to stand back and figure out if it was really feasible for me to make a, a living from the markets. So I decided to, to get serious about trading, and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Uh, working with my mentor for about 18 months to two years. It was a period during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching and developing a strategy that importantly suited my personality. I extensively back and forward tested and developed a rigorous risk management approach to underpin the strategy. Uh, but most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game and probably the most important development um, was the watershed shift really from being a, a highly goal orientated and uh, focused on financial gains to becoming a process orientated individual. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy. Oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets, in the form of losing trades. But once you make that shift and you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset, understanding the true nature of trading insofar as that it really is a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned the outcome of individual trades or even strings of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, the, the uh, performance figures you can see on the screen at the moment I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Also, since 2010, I've personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've also uh, consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands, contributing written webinar and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading psychology uh, to strategy development and execution. In addition to my fund management and private mentoring, I'm also the resident market expert at Tickmill. 
uh, providing uh, daily market analysis and a, and a daily setup that I'm tracking in the markets. You can actually um, register through the blog to receive those updates uh, via email to get a flavor for my style and approach to the markets. Um, my other passion project really is, uh, is as head of trading and trader education for fxcareerswap.com. We offer uh, development and funding to retail trading talent at FX Career Swap. We don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge. We work on mindset development through our structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. Uh, for those who are interested, you can reach out to me through LinkedIn or, uh, or contact me um, via the, the website there, fxcareerswap.com, and uh, I'm happy to give you uh, more information with respect, to, uh, with respect to that program. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of, um, of where it is I'm coming from. Uh, what I want to do now is, uh, is jump into some, uh, some, some charts, but not the technical charts that we're gonna look at in a minute. This is some sentiment and flow information that I track. We're going to start at the at where we ended last week, which is with um, with Bitcoin. Not uh, not a uh, an instrument that I uh, actively trade, but uh, we looked at this um, this idea last week with respect to historical volatility and being drained out of the market. And the past seven or eight times that's occurred has preceded some quite significant moves in the market. If we if we jump to the Bitcoin chart here now. Um, we were looking last week at this descending trend line and um, we actually had this one was the one we were looking at here. And we got the breakout um, just really after we finished the session last week. And um, some of that breakout was actually uh, on the on news that came out that Square, the, uh, the financial payments uh, business that is, uh, is run by uh, the founder of Twitter, uh, it's actually put a $50 million investment into, um, into Bitcoin. And that helped um, pop Bitcoin this time last week. And, uh, and we've since traded higher. And whilst we hold now above this ascending trend line support, I think we, like I said last week, we've got a crack at the uh, projected ascending trend line resistance, which is starting to tick up a bit now. We could be heading up towards 14,000 potentially. Um, so that's one to, to keep an eye on. And you can see there how that, information, that flow information or, or volatility information um, feeds into, into the market, uh, market movements there. And that said, let's look at some, uh, some foreign exchange flow data. This is from Credit Agricole. Um, they've just uh, enhanced their FX um, positioning and flow tracker data, uh, which uh, should deliver some pretty interesting signals. Um, they've, uh, they've back tested this strategy over the past, uh, eight years and annualized delivered a 15% return. And um, I'll share these signals uh, with you on a, a weekly basis. Obviously, by the time, uh, by the time they, uh, you, you see these on, on the Thursday, they'll be a little bit stale because they, uh, these signals are issued on Monday. I'll be sharing them with the guys on the trading team at FX Career Swap though. Um, but anyway, what we're looking at here is the flow data. And you can see that last week, uh, the euro was close to three standard deviations away from the mean in terms of uh, long positioning in the market. We've seen a bit of a pullback this week, but we're still, uh, we're still pretty stretched. And so that suggests that we could see um, some corrective downside in the euro. And uh, we'll look at some charts in a minute uh, that would underpin that. We also see the Kiwi and the Aussie pretty sweat, uh, stretched and the Swissy. Um, less so, obviously, the, the dollar uh, to the downside. So they, what, they, what we're basically seeing here is if you take it at its, in its rawest form, um, the euro sec, uh, the, the Swedish krona here, um, would give a, an interesting short position as euro longs are stretching the upside and the biggest short positioning is in the Swedish krona at the moment. So uh, in its rawest sense, that would be the, the signal. Um, but you can see here in terms of, if you think about FX majors and the dollar, uh, the dollar uh, longs paired significantly. And um, um, so the, the stretch play in terms of the FX majors is, uh, is looking at a signal on the short side in the euro dollar. Um, and that's underpinned further. This is the JP Morgan um, flow data. 
And uh, we're seeing a bit of a tick up here now. We, we were very stretched on the downside in terms of uh, US dollar shorts, and we're seeing a bit of a, a pullback there. So um, we'll start to see now, or we'll look now as we go into the charts, how that, uh, how that might impact our, uh, our technical views. So let's check in with, um, with the fractals. Uh, this is the, the fractal going back to 2017 that we've been tracking. It has been working as a decent market map for, uh, for current price action. And, um, and we've put in this low, or we're trying to hold the low here and, and tick higher in terms of the dollar. What we're actually looking for now is a dollar high to occur into the US elections. Now, that's, that's kind of premised on the moment that, uh, that we're currently um, looking at the, uh, the, the betting in terms of the US elections that Biden looks a favorite at the moment or a shoe in almost at this stage to get in. And if he does, we think that that will have implications for the dollar, potentially weaken the dollar. And, um, and so we're looking for this November 3rd into that election high. If we can hold this current low, uh, you can see how we're, we're tracking almost to the day here, October, October 12th low, and um, we have an October 16th low. So there or thereabouts in terms of the, the, uh, the fractal overlay. So we'll see now if this dollar can push higher. And so that obviously has, um, implications for the euro, which we would look to trade lower. And, um, and we can see we're, we're kind of in the ballpark there with the euro, uh, looking, for, looking for some weakness now to play out. And I'll show you it on the execution charts how I'm set up for that. But um, that's what we're looking at with the euro. Uh, cable, obviously very, very choppy environment um, in terms of sterling at the moment, headline driven. And um, you can see that we're, uh, we're popping lower again now after yesterday's whipsaw. All of this is based obviously on source comments coming out with respect to uh, Brexit and the extension of negotiations. Uh, yesterday morning we were, you know, we were at lows in the market, um, you know, on any cable cross or cable itself, we we're trading down maybe a hundred pips or more. And, um, and we had one headline come out and within a second the algos took it back up through the highs and we're now selling off again. So like I said last week, what I expect is a messy, uh, a messy low to occur in cable. And we probably see that into, uh, into the elections now. So we could see cable drift back down into the lows here, maybe a, a little bit higher, just off the lows before we recover into a potential US election low. But the, mud the waters are kind of muddied with cable a little bit, obviously, because we're always at the whim of uh, the next Brexit headline. So I prefer to play it through the Euro at this stage. The other one I'm playing at the moment is the Aussie, um, highlighted the potential for a correction. It's a similar story, again, almost to the, the tick here. October the 16th was the high in 2017, coming off the highs. And what do we have here? October the 12th was our high. So, you know, we're, 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 this, this 2017 model is really tracking quite nicely at the moment. And again, as with all these things, I, I'm not just trading the model, I'm looking at specific setups, but where you have this historical or seasonal implications for these pairs, it's certainly worth um, paying attention to and, uh, and you can use it as a guide. So let's see how that plays out. Last but not least, let's check in with the S&P 500. Um, but an interesting, I looked at this on a line chart basis and uh, went back to, uh, all the way back to 2009, you can see what we've done here is we, um, we took out this uh, ascending trend line in that last high. We've since come back um, down through to retest it from below here, and we're struggling to get back above it. Um, we'll take a look a little bit closer at the S&P in a minute on uh, the execution charts, but you can see the, um, the potential pattern here. Uh, this broadening pattern is, uh, is in play at the moment. And, um, and we'll see how that look, what that looks like now in terms of setups and opportunities. So let's start as always with the dollar. Uh, the charts I've, I've highlighted here um, with the amber tags are the ones I'm gonna look at. If you have a chart that you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover, I'm happy to do that at the end. Equally, if you have any questions, you can fire those into the chat box at the end. I'll let you know once, uh, once we're done with the review of uh, these charts. So this is the, uh, this is the dollar index broad basket and, um, and what we're looking at now is for this current low to hold and for us to get up into, into November 
the beginning of November here to test this resistance zone at the 95.86 versus this swing low. We have an equality objective as well at 95.93. So it's all nicely poised here for that test. We do need to clear this trend line though. We've had three tests, we've held three. Like, uh, like the guys I work with know that when you get that fourth test of a trend line, that's, the trend line tends to give way on the fourth test, but more certainly the third test, uh, we always look for a hold. So we'll see if the dollar can get through here. If it can clear the trend line, then we look for a retest of the price cycle. Highs 94.73 en route then to an ideal test of the um, 96 area uh, heading into the, in, into the elections. Uh, the equal weight of dollar index. Let's, uh, let's remove these and bring in this. So in terms of the equal weight of dollar index, we've got a similar story here. What we're looking for is that current low to hold mm -hmm. and, um, and for this equidistant swing to play out. Take us a little bit higher here. Um, let's just zoom out a couple of layers. So we're back into that, uh, that resistance area just ahead of 123. And um, that's versus this uh, 111.99 or 1, uh, 112, uh, 120 holding, sorry. Um, 119, not 111, uh, 119. And if that holds, then we're looking for 122.88 into the US election as, um, as the target there. Now, this is the equal weight dollar index. So this is the dollar index that incorporates the Aussie and it has an equal weight in versus the Euro, Aussie, Yen and Sterling. So, um, so if this is ticking up, what that should mean is that we're seeing uh, a weight in, in those in the, in the counterparts. So let's, let's take a look at those, firstly with the Euro. So the Euro has uh, obviously been trending higher. We're looking to, to take out some trend line support here on the Euro on a closing basis today. If we do, then what I'm looking for is a test down to this 115 area. Uh, and if we, um, if we bring in the equality objective versus the current pattern here, that, um, that actually suggests slightly lower, almost uh, retesting this uh, prior high at the 114.15. So if we can uh, if we get through this trend line on closing basis, certainly look for a retest of lows, then the next marker is going to be the 115 and through there we look for the equality objective for setting up then for that uh, that leg higher um, into that November low so that would complete a bigger corrective pattern so what we look for is something like this uh, let's see here and then from there we look for longs to reload and, um, and then we'd have a, at least a 122 on the upside would be the, um, the initial objective so that's the type of pattern I'd be, I'm looking to, to play out in the euro. So the dollar, the dollar basket signal is, is short euro, it's short cable. So let's have a look at that. So cable trading in this, um, in this interim channel here. We can take out support now at uh, yesterday's low, 128.50. Then we look for cable to test down into the channel support at, uh, at 128.50. On, uh, sorry, 125 would be the downside objective here. Let's just take a look at the symmetry swing objective. Sorry, the equality objective. Quality objective even lower. We can back down trading 123 there um, versus this initial decline. And if this is going to be the corrective high, we've yet to see that. But uh, certainly things are looking a, a little weak now for cable. We weren't able to recapture the upside in terms of the trend line resistance that was broken. We've almost tested it from below and, and rolled over here. But again, all about the closes. These are daily timeframes. Uh, the, the confirmation only comes at the close of the candle. So that's cable. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the Aussie. This is the trade I'm in at the moment, short, uh, short the Aussie through the break of this um, ascending trend line support. We had the uh, RBA governor out overnight suggesting that um, that the economic crisis in Australia equal to that of the Great Depression. And certainly there are now implications that uh, rate adjustments are imminent in Australia. Uh, employment data wasn't too hot either. So the initial target for this move now is going to be the um, 69 handle, which is the equality objective versus the last swing. Could go deeper than that and it could test down into the 68.30, which are these prior lows over here. So, uh, but the first objective 
certainly will be um, 69.30ish versus the current move. Uh, so we're getting confirmation there. We've got the euro, sterling, and um, and the Aussie. So let's see what the yen's doing. So the yen is kind of. I mentioned this last week. The yen is kind of trapped um, with U.S. yields at the moment. So we're not seeing too much of a reaction here in the yen. But whilst we hold uh, this 105 handle, then I still think we have potential to test this uh, descending trend line resistance in this triangle almost triangle within triangles here in terms of the yen, but certainly we could see that 106.78. So almost the yen is, is, isn't confirming the, uh, the, broader, um, the broader sell signal that we've got in terms of dollar index, but uh, like I say, kind of trapped by the yield story in the US. So let's take a look at uh, Swissy. So Swissy, um, whilst we can hold this swing low here at the 90.77 level, we can look for the Swiss to trade higher to the equality objective and this descending trend line resistance at, uh, at 93.50, 93.70 area um, before we potentially make the, the next leg to the downside in terms of the Swissy. Looney, obviously with the, uh, the Aussie weakening, we can look now for the Looney to strengthen and uh, look for a test up into this uh, 35.26, that's versus this 131 low. So again, look for a strong close today in terms of the loony, and then you could play pullbacks from the, uh, into the London session tomorrow to get in on the long side and reduce your, your risk reward there. Um, Euro yen, another trade that, uh, that I've been in. And we're just coming down into the um, projected ascending trend line support now. We took out the channel and we rolled over and I, I took some profits on this, but what I'm looking for now is if we can take out this, uh, this 122.90 area, then uh, I'll be back in on the short side looking for the equality objective here, uh, which should see us down into 121. Uh, we could go deeper if we play versus the swing high here, could be looking at 120.50. So between 120.50 and 121, once we take out this, uh, this 122.90, that's the, um, that's the downside objective currently in the Euro Yen. Sterling Swiss, this is a box trade or potentially a box setup. There are two targets here. If we break the um, box support at 117.50, then we have um, an equality objective versus this structure, which would take us down to 113.30. If we take the box to the top side, looking less likely at the moment, if we did, then we'd have uh, an equal objective 120, 126. So um, watch for the box to break and then you can get in on uh, intraday timeframes and look for a retest of the box uh, support to act as resistance. And then you've got ample downside uh, to run if this thing is going to roll over as, uh, as projected. So that's one to keep an eye on, probably heading into next week now or um, tomorrow. Sterling, we've talked about Sterling Yen. I got whipsawed out of this yesterday. And lo and behold, it, uh, it rolls over. So again, if this sterling yen now takes out the channel support here at 135, uh, yesterday's low, let's say 135.50, if we take that out, then there is a big target on the downside here, 128.30. Um, so again, you can go onto the intraday charts and look for um, a pullback to this support area at 135.50 as resistance to, uh, to play for the bigger targets on the downside in terms of sterling yen. Sterling CAD, nothing for me to do there. Sterling Kiwi, I, was, I also had <coughs> this trade running, um, took some more profits on this. Um, not really a clear setup for me at the moment. Uh, those two should be blank. Sterling Aussie, trying to break to the top side here. This one has been tricky. Um, looks like we could potentially today even get another failure below the trend line. So again, not an immediate, uh, immediate action. I've covered the Aussie, the Aussie Kiwi, another one I'm in at the moment. We took out the ascending trend line support. So that gives us this channel to play for now. Um, certainly we pay attention to 73.93, probably a little bit sticky there. We've got weekly S3, prior swing lows. Um, but once we consolidate and ultimately take that out, then we'd be looking for the descending, projected descending trend line support, uh, 72.70, and then the equality objective versus this swing. Uh, would have us down at 72 level on the downside. So those are the downside targets for that trade that I'm currently uh, currently running. 
Aussie Kiwi. It's taken out ascending trend line support. So whilst we hold below the median point of this channel now, then I think uh, the Aussie Kiwi can, uh, can move lower, certainly to test down into the 106 area. Uh, the projected descending trend line support is the, uh, is the logical target there. Let's take a look at the Kiwi. So looking at the Kiwi for this <coughs> test into the, project, into the uh, potential reversal zone, which will give us this head and shoulder scenario. Um, we just came shy of it yesterday, and obviously we've rolled over hard today. So watching for, um, for a breach now of the ascending trend line support to set up, uh, set up a move to the downside. In terms of the technical target there, well, we'll measure the head to the neck. So um, if, we, once we, if we can break through, let's uh, set that up there. So if we can take out the support here at 64.89, then there's a 61.89 downside target. So what I'd be looking for would be um, this type of scenario. So we move down into the neck, always a crowded area on that, uh, that initial test. So what I'd like to see there is we get um, a little pullback into retest the ascending trend line uh, support, then as resistance. And that would be the area that I'd be looking to, uh, to get in on the short side and, and get, try and get into to that move there. So that's what I'm looking at with Kiwi, Kiwi Yen. Similar to the Aussie M, we've taken out the um, support area. It wasn't a uh, wasn't a signal for me as such there, but certainly it's starting to look weak. And the downside objective would be into the lower uh, lower part of this channel now, 6780 area. Kiwi Swiss, um, I have this overnight. I take as a profits now. Watch for uh, watch for the test here of the ascending trend line uh, support, 59.98 through there. And um, we've got some clear water, certainly down to 59, and we could be heading uh, lower then, even to test this area as, uh, as range support down to 57. But again, watch, uh, watch how we trade at this uh, ascending trend line support in terms of the Kiwi Swiss. Kiwi CAD looks like it's going to give up its trend line now. So certainly if we can get through 86.60 in terms of the Kiwi CAD, then we've got... Uh, Downside to 85.70 will be the uh, the objective on the downside. Swiss yen, I've got an order waiting to be filled in this one um, through these lows. Have, hasn't been triggered yet, but if we uh, if we do trade, if we can get through the through the lows through 14.90, then we've got a downside objective here at uh, 112.20, and I've got an order uh, to take that trade if it plays out. S&P 500, just talked about this one. We pay attention in terms of the fact that the S&P is obviously driving risk sentiment. If we, if we don't take out this trend line support, then there is a chance that, uh, that we're in a bear trap leading to a bull trap. So let me just draw this in for you, get rid of this. Get this a bit bigger. So we've got a potential five wave sequence here. So we have one, two, this will be three, this will be four. And the fifth there, I think, would set up a, uh, a marginal new high versus our, our current highs. And uh, that would just get everybody excited on the upside. Um, but what I'd be paying attention to on that marginal new high is, um, is divergence. And we could get a, a great divergence set up here. Everyone gets pulled up as we just take out the highs before we get uh, another leg lower. But at this point, pay attention really to this um, 3430 area, 3400. If we get through there, then uh, I'd say the high is in and we can discount this count. And, um, and what we'd be looking for then would be that this is our A, B, and we'd have a C point here, 3160 heading into the elections. As people reposition basically ahead of the election um, and take cash off the, off the table. NASDAQ came up into its quality objective and it's rolling over again. Watch the trend channel here. We take out the 11,500 area to suggest that this is the AB and we've got a C target, which would be so we've got a C target down there at 10,481. So we'll be looking at this type of pattern into, into an election low and then, uh, and then it probably takes off again to the upside. Gold, 
tricky, still trading in a very tight range. I think this is bound pretty much by the elections at this stage, um, waiting to see uh, what, what the shakeout is before gold's gonna make its, its move. Crude oil, again, trapped in this range at this point. What I am interested in is copper here. Um, copper doesn't look like it's gonna make a new high. We've traded up, retest the uh, prior ascending trend line support as resistance. It looks like we're potentially rolling over here. The cycle indicator is already bearish. And copper certainly leads those commodity currencies. If we, if we see weakness in copper now, we can expect risk sentiment to, uh, to meaningfully roll over. So those, uh, those are the charts I'm watching, setups I'm watching, positions I'm in, uh, Aussie and Euro mainly at this stage, uh, watching some, uh, some key potential trend line breaks to play pullbacks and then getting on some, uh, some moves. Okay, so that wraps up uh, the charts I wanted to discuss today. Are there any questions? Would anyone like me to take a look at a chart I haven't, I haven't covered? You can type it in the chat box and I'll, I'll do so. If you don't have a question, if everything's clear, and then in the chat box, equally helpful. So I know we're all on the same page. Okay, Tahir. Hi, Tahir. Hello. Hello. To hear. Yeah. How yeah. are you doing? I'm doing well. Great, Mr. Patrick. Nice having you by this time of the day. Very good. Very good. Well, how can I help you? Yeah. Uh, concerning the trends you just predicted or you just forecasted, basically some investors are having a schedule ahead of the U.S. elections. But uh, what I'm, I need to clear up on is... Uh, uh, are you not considering any fundamental or sentiment, investor sentiments in your analysis? Uh, so I just got to notice that you only use technicals concerning uh, price movement. So, uh, so here, to here, this is my this is how I look at things. Um, to me, that the chart, that the price, the current price contains all current information known by all market participants. And so the technical setups or the, the patterns that I'm looking at are a indication of a, um, a probable scenario. So one probability being higher than another. But what drives those patterns to complete is, um, is often fundamental or market, you know, market supply or demand shock. So um, obviously the US election is, is a major um, component to that at the moment, as is Brexit. And so... The patterns, to my mind, proceed or, or, or give us, a, give us the, the edge for an opportunity that may precede new market news. Does that make All sense? Right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I'm, you know, I'm fully cognizant and conversant in all the current market narratives and themes. And, and like I say, the guys I work with, you have to be, you have to have that because having that information allows you to almost look at the charts and where you see a technical pattern, um, the knowing what could be coming down the pike in terms of market narratives and, and uh, dynamics allows you to see what could drive the price action. All right, thank you. Uh, actually, I have to say thank you for improving my trading strategy with your forecast design. All those stocks you are giving, thank you. You're very welcome, thanks to here. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm gonna wrap this one up here and we will reconvene at the same time next week. Have a great weekend and a great trading week ahead. All the best, thanks.